What the hell happened to Rosemary? Don't you disappear too? Will you get out of my way? What's the matter with you? Holy shit! She's a friend of mine! Hey, baby. What happened? There's some kind of madman loose in here. Son of a bitch! Shit! Shit! We gotta get out of here! Get out! Everybody get away! Get out! What are you waiting for? Run! Quiet! Quiet! Be quiet! Quiet! Listen to me! Quiet! Let's find the emergency exit! Help! Come on, we'll use that! She's right. She put on that mask and scratched herself. Get it? Because of that scratch, she became a demon. An instrument of evil. Like they said in the damn movie, you heard them. Right? Yes. We gotta stop it. <laughs> Believe me, we gotta stop the movie. Podcast. My name is Chris Ward, and today I will be speaking with Mr. Myron Schmidt. How are you doing, Myron? Hello, doing good. How are you, Chris? I'm very, very well. How are things over in the US of A? Oh, s- spring and pollen is in high swing here. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got a very windy day here. It's, it was nice this morning. It's all clouded over, and now it's windy. Yeah, yeah. These. Great spring days, the sun is out, the temperature won't get much past 70 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius, who knows, but it's a nice day. Oh, good. I'm very pleased for you. <laughs> anyway, we are the sort of the ancient slumber podcast people. Um, we're going to talk some horror films. Yes, we are. We are. We're going to sort of head towards the franchisey side of horror films, I do believe. I think we'll probably park it there for a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, there's plenty to discuss. Um, yeah, I know a lot. A lot of podcasts do the franchise stuff. You know, the Friday the Thirteenth and the Nightmare on Elm Streets. That's all sort of stuff. So I suppose it's been covered. But I always think they're rich subjects to go back to every now and again. They're always fun. I mean, uh, the podcasts I listen to, I don't turn them off just because they do a franchise. It's it's fun. That's it, that's it. It's always, especially when you, something like, say, Friday the 13th, where you've got, like, about 12 films to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> and your, your favourites change over time, I find. Yeah, exactly. And plus a remake. And if one of the people on the podcast likes the remake and the other doesn't, it just is funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a subject that could come up at some point. Probably. <laughs> In fact, films that one of us likes and the other one doesn't is probably going to come up in a few minutes time <laughs> probably will <laughs> <laughs> oh dear uh, right before we get into a little franchisey discussion then is there anything you want to talk about yeah i i spent some time watching some movies while well, i do that a lot but uh i've seen a couple decent ones uh first one is uh a film from Adam Green called Digging Up the Marrow. Okay, I haven't heard of that. Um, it's a faux documentary, mockumentary, whatever the case may be. Um, it's an unusual film because it stars Adam Green yeah. and is cinematographer Will Barrett. And with notable appearances of Kane Hodder, Mick Garris... And company, yeah, yeah. Robert England? Uh, no, oh. no, no. That's too bad. Um, but anyways, the, the, as the story goes, the film was inspired by an artist by the name of Jack Pardee that gave uh, Adam Green a book of monsters, and so Adam Green kind of took it and made a mockumentary of what if the monsters were real, okay. and it's it's good fun. I, I know why some people don't like it. There's not a whole lot about the monsters. But, you know, it's a slower movie, but it's uh, it's quite entertaining, and I really liked it. It's a found footage documentary style. I love those stupid things. Ah, yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the other one that I saw, and I didn't write much down for it, but uh, it was an older movie called All Hallows' Eve. Ah, uh, yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the um, style I like is anthologies. And this one is definitely an anthology. Mm-hmm. It's uh, got a great little wraparound. It interconnects a few stories. Uh, it's got creepy killer clowns. Um, you know, it's got everything. It was well done. Um, shot in 2013, I know. Uh, but it's a good movie. Good, cool. good little movie. Good little killer clown stuff. Actually, kind of creepy. Excellent. Not, not, not through the whole whole thing, but you know, there's some there's some good creepy stuff in it, uh, uh, especially with Art the Clown. So you know, clowns are always great fodder for horror movies. Yeah, that's out over here by uh, 101 Films, I think. So. All right, all right, all right. But um, yeah, I, that is on my list of ones to look at. Um, talking of clowns. One I've watched recently is Clown, Eli Roth's Clown. Have you seen that? I have not. What did you think of it? I, I have a such a love-hate relationship with Eli Roth movies. Yeah, So okay. I, I, I just kind of just shy away from him a lot of times. Yeah, he does divide a lot of people. Um, I quite liked it. Um, I didn't think it was... I don't think it went as far as it could have gone. They're, they're, really? Yes, which is quite surprising. Because, I mean, Roth only produced it. He didn't direct it or oh, anything like that uh, all right all right so i was gonna I'm, say it's eli roth then it didn't go as far as it could have yes yeah, i think if he directed it it probably would have gone a bit more but um i liked it i like the look of the clown it was very i mean it was like watching a slipknot video really you know <laughs> um oh. I, i'm just calling up my uh, letterbox review actually <laughs> i gave it three and a half stars on letterbox uh, takes a while to give you what you really want, but when the gruesome stuff hits, it's well worth the wait. Gory fun, not afraid to show us the nasty stuff. Yeah, there is a lot of blood and guts in it when it when it happens, but you have to sort of wait for it. But um, it's an interesting story, actually. I quite liked it. It's uh, do you know the story? I don't. No, it's about a guy who um, his kid's birthday party. They've booked a clown um, who cancels, so uh, he finds this old clown outfit and he puts it on to do the party. And yep. then once the party's finished, he can't get the clown makeup off, and oh, uh, it, it it sort of becomes him. Um, he can't get the clothes off. He's he's got the big red like spongy nose, and he can't take it off. And his missus just grabs it and yanks it off and pulls the end of his nose off. And he sort of gradually turns into this clown. But it's it's uh very it's like you know uh what's the Pennywise from it? It becomes that sort of thing. Really? So it's sort of put the makeup's possessing him and becoming part of him type thing. But uh, interesting story. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I'm trying to remember the movie where I saw. Uh, God, I, I can't. I thought it was a short in a movie about this clown that bit somebody and then that person turns into a clown, sort of, and it's cannibalistic and weird. And it was a short, and I just can't remember now. All right, uh, it doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do know. <laughs> I watch a lot of weird stuff. No, really? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay, uh, anything else you wanted to mention? Have you seen Nightcrawler yet? No. Not really a horror movie, but it's, uh, it's a very uncomfortable movie. It's probably well worth a watch at some point. Is that Jake Gyllenhaal? That would be the one. That's the one, yeah. Uh, uh, it's on my list, I think, but uh, haven't got to it yet. You should get to it. It's not... Not strictly a horror, but it's a uh, it's rather creepy, uncomfortable film. Really good. Excellent. Okay. Right. I wanted to talk to you about <laughs> a film that you told me was absolutely terrible. Oh, God. No, it wasn't God. It was definitely you. <laughs> right. A couple of weeks ago, I said to you... Um, no, you said to me, sorry, you messaged me and you said, do not watch VHS Viral or ABCs of Death 2. Oh, God. Yes, I did. You did. Right. I did watch VHS Viral and you were right. It was shite. Oh, God. <laughs> it was terrible. Ab- cheap, nasty and just did nothing. No, didn't do anything. The stories were poor. Oh, God, it was just bad. It, it looked was... bad. That's what got me. It was, it was just, and it was confusing. Yeah, it was just I don't know, very very poor. And, you know, after part two, which I really enjoyed, I, I liked, I loved part one. I loved part two. I didn't love part one. I liked it. It was all right, but I loved part two. But I this, was really this... really excited for VHS Viral. That I shit, it was just yikes, bad. Yes, 
Anyway, <laughs> moving on. ABCs of Death 2. Yes. Now, I had that pre-ordered on Blu-ray because I liked the first one. And it was £11 to buy on Amazon. Okay. So I pre-ordered it. Then you sent me that message about how terrible it was. And I had some other expenditures suddenly turn up. So I thought, well, I'll cancel that. Then I'll save the money and blah, blah, blah. Anyway. You're going to blame me, aren't you? (laughs) I was in town yesterday in a second-hand shop. Or CEX, as we like to call them. I was walking out the door on the shelf next to me abc's of death 2 on blu-ray five pounds which is what about eight dollars something like that something like that all right and i thought well it's more than half the price of what it was when it came out two or three only came out two or three weeks ago here so i thought fair enough i'll have a punt for a fiver and i watched it this morning and i enjoyed it why did you how okay so the first (laughs) the first sequence starts out really well the a1 I really like that. I thought, here we go. And it just went downhill from there. See, I'm the opposite. I think it started off quite badly and got better. Oh, God. Yes. I mean, even the even the Sasuke twins couldn't save this film. Yeah, but they couldn't save See No Evil 2 either. They tried. I mean, it's a good old-fashioned slasher movie. It's all right. It's nothing mystical or magical about it. They tried. They did better than the first one. Well, I prefer the first one. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I like right. American Mary, though. I thought that was great. It was a good movie. Fantastic yeah. movie. Yes. So so tell me, why did you like ABCs of Death so much? I didn't like it so much. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but after the way it was built up, and some of the I've read comments from other writers and things who really hated it, and I enjoyed it. Once you get down to, I think it was round about Q, I thought, Q for questionnaire. He's answering the questions and she's sort of telling him that he's got the job and then you find out they take his brain out and all this sort of stuff. Spoiler. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once you got to that point, I think it, it hit up a gear. And apart from <laughs> one one or two, those last that last section I thought was great. <laughs> what do people want? It's a horror film. There's blood, there's guts, there's great little stories. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, all right, all right. I guess I can see your point, but... Oh, my God. V for just... Vacation. That was my favourite one. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> An arsehole getting stabbed in the back by a naked middle-aged prostitute. Brilliant. <laughs> That's what I wanted from it. Oh, God. Maybe I'll have to give it another watch. Honestly, yeah, I totally get those first sections. I did sort of start wondering half, about halfway through. I was going, this really isn't as good as the first one. This really is, the quality's not there. But say, once you hit those last sort of, those last dozen letters, I thought were well, fantastic. With one or two exceptions. I'm not saying everyone was brilliant, but I enjoyed it. It, it was fun. <laughs> I have to give it another watch. Yeah. I didn't because get, my, was, first, my first watch just didn't do it for me. There was the what is it P, the one with the three guys? The three, like, prisoners in the dark? I didn't get that one at all. I think it was a take on Oh Brother Where Art Thou or something. It was really weird, but yeah, the whole thing was weird. That was weird. Yeah, there was. So, I'm not saying it's an out and out classic, but I'd certainly watch it again. Well, I'm going to watch it again. I bought it now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you only paid five pounds. I can't get it for five. I can't get it for eight bucks here, even used. <laughs> Honestly, uh, to me, I enjoyed it. I thought the best ones were better than the best ones in the first film. Really? Yes, I thought so. But I think there are more better ones in the first film. Do you do you remember the first film? Do you remember Q for Quack? I absolutely yes. loved that one. That was very that, clever. Very, very that, clever. That was really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was really, really, really smartly done. That's the thing. I think the second one, I think it got the idea of the stories of death better than the first film i got more of a sense that everybody was thinking the same sort of along the same lines in the second one i can see where you would say that that's what i got from it i got i got the concept better in abc's too <laughs> oh I, I i probably did because i was just so bored yeah uh, I, yeah yeah say the first few for me I, well, I was going that way definitely but it brought it around for me by the end I think it's on Netflix. I'll have to give it another watch. I'll let you know what I think. I thought you bought it. Uh, about VHS Viral on Blu-ray. Oh, oh. oh right. Okay, gotcha. 
<laughs> can't for you more take than, it? Can't for you take more it than, back? Yeah, for more than eight pounds. Yeah. Just take it back. <laughs> you should be able to do that with shops. You should be able to take them back and say, "This was shit." Can I get something else? <laughs> I know. You should. You oh, should. Dear. Oh God. But yeah, that was my watching. I'm just trying to think of anything else I've watched recently. Uh, I have just watched. I've, I watched Blood and Black Lace the other night, the Mario Barber film. Oh, okay, okay. But I've reviewed that for a website, so you'll have to go and see there to see what I thought. Uh, <laughs> Serpent and the Rainbow. That's ah, it. the old Wes Craven movie. Yeah, that's coming out on Blu-ray here in a couple of weeks, so I've just watched and reviewed that. Um, I do. I like that film anyway, so you know that's going to get a positive one. Um, I did watch a werewolf film the other night called Late Phases. Yes. Have you heard? Have you seen that? No, I have not. Ah, I recommend that. I think you'll like that. Okay. I, yep. I, for for a minute there, I thought you were going to say Wolf Cop. Ah, uh, I like Wolf Cop. Oh God. I know. I've read uh, our friend Patrick's review on Letterbox. He wasn't very keen. <laughs> well. I've seen a lot of previews. It's, it's, it's on Netflix, and I just haven't been able to hit play on Wolf Cop yet. Uh, oh, so you haven't seen it? I have not. Oh, right, okay. Well, there you go, then. If you look on Letterbox, our friend Patrick Thompson has written a very uh, in-depth slagging off of it. <laughs> <laughs> but if I, I reviewed that last year for uh, ooh, Hey You Guys. Okay. So if you go to their website, you follow my review. I liked it. I've watched it again since, and I liked it even more. <laughs> Wolf Cop. All right. I'll, all right. I'll, I'll give that one a give that one an add on the list. Have you seen Machete? It's been a while, but yes. That's well, you, the Dan, that's Danny Trujillo, right? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you take the aesthetics of that, that old grindhouse thing where they show you. They go through it, and at the end, they do that machete will be back in machete kills and all that sort of stuff. Yes. It's that idea, but on a wolf cop. <laughs> on a cop who's a werewolf. <laughs> if you're on board with that sort of old grindhouse aesthetic, I think you'll like it. <laughs> but Patrick obviously didn't. The, the first thing when I started seeing trailers for Wolf Cop, the first thing I thought of was Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf. <laughs> no, it's not quite, it's not quite that. It, it, it is very silly. It's very, very silly, but it's fun silly. I like fun silly. Um, yeah. Have you, you ever seen a movie called uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil? Yes, wonderful film. Oh, God. That is, <laughs> that is one for the books. Oh, my God. Best bit of that is when he falls into that uh, chipper. I know. And he goes, are, you, know. are you okay? <laughs> Brilliant. Absolute genius. It was. It, the whole thing was just absolute genius. And on the opposite end of that, have you seen Ouija? No. No. Well, uh, don't. There is a movie called The Ouija Experiment. Is there? It's like a found footage movie. <laughs> Right, that's not the same as the one... No, this one was actually decent. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yep, 2011. Oh, right, yeah. I watched Ouija last weekend, the one, the latest one. I've heard nothing good about that at all. Yeah, it was absolute bollocks. It really was. But if you're having trouble sleeping, it might work. <laughs> There's better things than that. <laughs> well, yeah, this is true. Anyway, I think we should talk about something a bit more exciting. All right, let's do that. Okay, so our first discussion is going to be about demons. And demons too. Wonderful. Let's play a trailer. The preview you are about to watch is for a movie that is unlike any you have ever seen before. It is for a movie that goes beyond temporary fear to everlasting terror. It is a movie called Demons. Yes, the demons are coming, and they're coming for you. Warning, if you have the courage to see demons, sit near an exit. Otherwise, you might never get out. In your theater, who will survive the touch of the demons, and who will not? Demons. With music by Billy Idol, Motley Crue, The Adventures, Rick Springfield, and Saxon. 
This is no dream. This is happening right now. And it could be happening to you. Demons. They will make cemeteries their cathedrals. And the cities will be your tombs. Will you survive it? Demons. And we're back in the room. Righty ho. Demons from 1985. Yes. Yes. Directed by Lamberta Barber, son of Mario Barber, and king of the Aztecs. No, that's not that. <laughs> Starring. I'm, I'm going to cock these names up, but there you go. Urbano Barberini, Natasha Hovey, Carl Zinni, uh, Goretta Goretta, wonderful Goretta Goretta, and Bobby Rhodes, the legend that is. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Bobby Rhodes. How could you forget Bobby Rhodes? <laughs> you you can't. Not in this movie. <laughs> you, you never can. Full on, full on pimp master. Love it. He is. Right. Should we do a little synopsis? Go right ahead. Demons. A group of people are trapped in a West Berlin movie theatre, infested with ravenous demons who proceed to kill and possess the humans one by one, thereby multiplying their numbers. There you go. That's what it's about. That's right. Okay, um, I've got a bit of a history with this film because I come from an era of known as the 1980s, which I'm sure you remember. I do. Good. Of renting uh, several VHS classics every weekend. Uh, my mum was very liberal and let me watch pretty watch pretty much anything, apart from one particular film, which we will get to when we do our franchise talks. All right. All right. <laughs> which may be coming up very soon. <laughs> anyway, yes, and Demons was one of them. Um, and I must have paid for the tape several times in rentals, to be honest. Uh, the amount of times I've rented this out. And then when the, the, the video shop closed down, I actually bought the rental copy. A nice. Big box, uh, big box VHS copy, which unfortunately I sold many years ago when I went to DVD. But I do have another one now, which I found, I found on eBay. I got myself a VHS player again last year. There, there's actually some movies you can't get on uh, DVD. There are, and I've got. That's part of the reason I got it, and the fact I just like big box VHSs. All right then. But I got Demons, uh, which I bought, and uh, very kindly Noel Meller, who you may know from the world of podcasting, sent me his copy of Demons Two. Wow. On VHS, so I do have both of those sat on my shelf, which looks very lovely. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so Demons is a film. I just absolutely love this film. To me, if it's it's pure horror. There's no romantic side plots. There's no... I mean, there is a sort of comedy element, if you want want to say that. But there's no... There's nothing else going on except sheer terror. Correct. That's it. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, you know, as soon as... You know, you've got the, the beginning of the film where the girl's on the train in Berlin. You've got the the Claudio Simonetti score playing which is quite a creepy score uh, and then she meets this guy with a metal mask on the subway who gives her a ticket for this film when she gets one for a friend they go into this cinema and this is all within the first few minutes of the film and you start meet, meeting the different people who are going to be uh, watching that film that evening and bosh you're in straight away yep yep, yep. Um, no fat on this film whatsoever I don't know what the running time is it's only about 80 minutes something like that it's not long not long it's got some fantastic gore effects that still hold up it is it is packed with practical effects no computers no nothing all practical good stuff mm -hmm. good stuff it's uh, and you know let's talk about that score for a minute yes I, I always rank movie scores for especially horror movies um, up there with John Carpenter stuff. If people could come close to what he does, I'm okay with it. And in, in this case, Claudio Simonetti, fantastic score. Creepy stuff, great stuff. Yes. Um, the later you watch it at night, the better the score is. Yes. But it, it's really, it really adds adds to the movie. As does the soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> All 80s for 83 minutes. Plain and simple. Never has Fast as a Shark by Except ever been played in such a, a 
a more convenient way. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But you're right, it is. It's all horror, all monsters, start to finish. The look of the demons themselves. If you look, if you look at modern films like Twenty Eight Days Later, uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake, I think I think they owe a lot to this film. Yes, yes. You know, yes, they if, do. And it, it's from that era as well, you know, Evil Dead Two and Reanimator, when there was. It's not just blood. You get all sorts of green slime and yellow goo and pus and bleh, everything. Yeah. Thro- oh shit! And everything thrown at the screen. Exactly. Exactly. It's just absolutely manic, and the film's got an energy. It's got a real manic energy to it. Well, that's helped out by the guy on the motorcycle driving around swinging the samurai sword. What's better than that? Whilst, I've, I've, whilst playing fast as a shark by except. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It is. I mean, that was just... (laughs) It is insane. It is. And in in true Italian cinema tradition, it's none of it makes any any sense. No. No. It doesn't have to. I mean, I'll say now, we are going to... We're going to spoil every film we talk about anyway. So, you know, just when you think there's no hope for these people, they're not going to get out this cinema alive... They're cornered, you know, the motorbike's <laughs> running out of petrol, the sword's getting blunt, what's he going to do? And a helicopter crashes through the roof. And somehow a magical ladder appears down, I think. Was it a ladder or was it just debris they climbed out of? No, I think they just climbed the debris. <laughs> that was conveniently on a ramp. <laughs> it was conveniently the right height of the helicopter from to the ceiling to, uh, to get out. And then conveniently, the guy who sold them the tickets was on the roof waiting for them. It's nice how that happens. <laughs> Isn't uh, it, Jess? Again, it doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to, because you, you go with it. It's just the insanity of it. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, okay, so there we go. People being chased by demons. Um, what do we think of the cast? Um, I really enjoyed what they did with it. It... Uh, I, yeah, they're not going to win any Academy Awards either here or abroad for their acting chops, but they were. It was a solid performance. It was absolutely an '80s acted film. It was. It was great, you know. And of course, you always got to like Bobby Rhodes. Bobby Rhodes is the <laughs> <laughs> the man is a legend. He really is. He's on Twitter as well, so uh, do follow him. Because if you talk about demons on Twitter, he'll uh, he'll uh, reply to you. <laughs> Bobby Rhodes, it's, it the man good. is a legend. He's just he's big, he's black, he's bald, he's muscly, and he's got a handlebar moustache, and he shouts at people. <laughs> you, exactly. And he comes and it, out with the best line in the film: of, "Where the hell is Rosemary?" <laughs> I just love and, the way he says it. Oh. Comes into the movie with his uh, entourage. His entourage, yes, Goretta Goretta playing one of uh, playing Rosemary, in fact. <laughs> and, uh, yes, she's she's on Twitter as well. So uh, yes, I interviewed her a couple of years ago, and uh, she was very enthusiastic to talk about demons. Very appreciative of the audience of the fans that's, that it's got. You know, and it just—I I think the one thing about this is that it holds up. Yes. It's not one of those uh, that you've seen in the 80s and you go back for sentimental reasons. I mean, I think it legitimately holds up and is, uh, you know, it's a great movie to rewatch. There's there's so much in there to see, you know, what what nuance did you miss for the monsters? It's all, oh, God, you got to watch that. You can rewind the motorcycle scene. It's it just it really holds up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it is, and it actually, I mean, when I was a kid, it used to give me nightmares, but I like nightmares, so it was never a problem. <laughs> but you know, you know, if I had a bad dream about monsters, invariably it would be about a demon. Because well, I was about ten when I saw this, nine or ten, something like that. So, uh, you know, I think the look of the monsters is very, very. Uh, it's scary. It is scary. Yeah, it is, and. They did a lot of monsters. It wasn't just one or two. I mean, they had they had scads of monsters at some yeah. point. You know, not all of them were made up very convincingly. Well, yeah, if, you, if you if you slow the film down during certain scenes, they are some of the background ones are just people with masks on. <laughs> but that's just me looking for looking for these technical details. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. Not everybody can pull off what uh, Clive Barker did in Nightbreed. So, <laughs> well, no, this is true. This is true. Good, good movie. It really, it, it, it's it, it's got everything. It's got demons. It's got horror. It's got a great soundtrack. It, it's just, it's an all around great movie that stood the test of time. Yeah, I think I think if you're a fan of Evil Dead or any of any sort of modern zombie movies, I don't, I don't think you can go far wrong with this one. No, not at all. Not at all. And uh, you hadn't seen it until I recommended it to you, did you? That's correct. That it was uh until I just... bullied you into buying it. Yes, until like <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> but I'm glad I did and I bought the second one too. Excellent. And you got the um American editions, didn't you? I can't remember the company's name. Um, I did. I think it's Synapse, maybe. Synapse. Synapse. Yes, you got the. Yeah, I've got yeah. the Arrow Video versions over here, which are wonderful, wonderful editions. Well, what do they have for special uh, features? There's uh, audio interviews with director Lamberto Bavo, makeup artist Sergio Stivaletti, and journalist Laurie Kers- Kersey Kerchi. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, along with interviews with Lamberta Barva, Goretta Goretta and Claudio Simonetti. Oh, of course we forgot to mention it was produced by Dario Argento. An interview with Dario Argento about the idea of demons, how it came about. There's an interview with Claudio Simonetti and Luigi Cosi's top ten Italian terrors, where he discusses the high points of Italian splatter. Oh, very interesting. But one thing we got over here which I well I should have mentioned after do we do Demons 2 really Demons 3 a proper official Demons 3 sequel is included in these packages in the form of a comic really yes part 1 comes with Demons and part 2 comes with Demons 2 interesting yes I haven't read them through all the way through yet so I can't comment too much but um, I do know it's a, it's a medieval setting I'll be a son of a gun yes I'll have, I'll have to check on the see if I have that I, I think it was Ar- I think it was actually done by Arrow themselves, so or commissioned by Arrow. So I don't know whether your editions will get that, but uh, Arrow have started distributing in the US now, haven't they? I think they have. Yeah, so that may be uh, maybe one to look out for. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, if you do, I remember because I made this mistake. If you buy the steel book that contains Demons 1 and 2, you don't get the comic. You have to buy them individually to get the comics. Ah. Uh, oh, gotcha. So, so I've I've bought them individually as well. I've got about 10 different formats, this film. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fan, as you can tell. Yeah, I've tried to stop doing that. At one time I had that with Halloween and The Exorcist and other stuff, but, yes. uh, yeah, you know... There are certain things you just have to have. Yes. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. <laughs> so I'm really curious. What did you think of Demons 2? Right. Well, why don't we play a trailer and then we'll get into it. Yeah. 
And that was Demons 2. Right, Demons 2, followed in 1986, again directed by Lamberta Barber. Starring David Edwin Knight, Nancy Brilli, Coralina Cataldi Tassoni, Asia Argento, and Bobby Rhodes. Again. Great Bobby Rhodes returns, but that's not a spoiler. Because <laughs> he's not playing the same character. No, he's not. He's a, he's a weightlifter in this one. He's a bodybuilding pimp in this one. <laughs> no, he's just, it's good stuff. He's a bodybuilding I, pimp called Hank. <laughs> yes, that's right. You couldn't get a more American name in an Italian film, could you? Uh, exactly. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Hank. <laughs> okay, a group of tenants and visitors are trapped in a 10-story high-rise apartment building infested with demons who proceed to hunt the dwindling humans down. And hunt they do indeed. That they do. They do. So, so overall, hmm. what did you think of Demons 2? Again, I have a massive affection for Demons 2 because over here, uh, I think I'm right in saying the release, Demons was released a year later over here. We got it in 86. And so it came out around the same time as Demons 2. Okay. So I saw them both very close together. Okay. So, so I've got that nostalgia factor with Demons 2 that I've got with the first one. Um, I like Demons 2, although it's not quite the same as Demons 1. There's a slightly different vibe. Very much so. Very much so. Um, it can be a little confusing, too, because it's a movie and a movie. Yes. So and is the first one. So is the first one there. It, it is, but it, this one holds on to that movie and a movie a little bit longer than the first one, I think. Yes. And it kind of drags it a bit because of it, I think. Um, it certainly picks up the action when they're um, in the parking garage. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what you call them over there. I call them parking garages. But, you know, you got Bobby Rhodes. I think he's actually moving cars at one point with his bare hands. <laughs> he only has to look at them and they move. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but that, yeah. um, that, that reminded me, that scene really uh, reminded me of um, – kind of the ending scenes for a movie called I think it's called The Pack it's a zombie movie a French zombie movie oh, that rings a bell that rings a bell I can't remember it but yeah is it The Pack I think it's The Pack The Horde are you thinking of The Horde The Horde yes. not The Pack The Horde yes I've, yeah. yes I've got that yeah yeah and it was uh, one of my favorite zombie movies and but it did uh, it really reminded me of that and that was uh, that was a good thing because up till that point I was really struggling with demons too I have to tell you, I was struggling with it, but when I got to that scene, it really took a major uptick for me. Yeah, I can see why people don't aren't quite as on board with Demons 2, because it is a little bit more all over the place. Uh, I think tonally, they tried to put some more artistic stuff into it. You know, the shots of her running against the sunset and all that sort of stuff. Yep, yep. They, they definitely go for a more arty direction in places. Yes, you you could tell by the way they try and flip around and then reconnect the stories. It just kind of you, yeah. your your mind tends to wander through some of that stuff. Uh, um, the, the soundtrack I, is less thrash metal and more sort of new wave goth. Like <laughs> the Smiths and uh, I can't remember what else is on the soundtrack. Is the the Cult on there? Yeah, and uh, Love and Rockets and bands like that. Yeah, yep, that which isn't a it, bad thing, but it's it changes no, the tone of the film. It does. It, it it almost went from a straight horror movie of demons to this artsy kind of thing, and it uh, it it kind of failed at the beginning with that, but it did it did really pick up towards the end. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a moan, right? Uh, you know the central premise of the girl in the bedroom watching the film about the demons on the telly. Yep, and the demon comes out the telly at her. Of course. Now, when I was younger, I used to think that was silly. That took me out the film completely. Really? Yes. I'm on board with the concept of people turning into demons, but when they start coming out the telly, I'm a little bit, nah. All right. As I've gotten older, I've come to terms with it, and I've, you know, as I've got into Italian cinema more, and I've accepted the silliness <laughs> of where they go with these things. Gotcha. Why is it when you get a film like The Ring and someone climbs out the telly 
it's suddenly accepted as being a stroke of genius, and demons did it 20 years before, and everyone laughed at it. I don't know, but it, it's got to go to the overall... I mean, let's look at Demons and Demons 2. It's just a almost overacted, over-crazy monster movie. Yeah, it, It's all meant to be kind of tongue-in-cheek, ha-ha, funny-funny in a lot of places. I mean, certainly no one can take anybody seriously driving a motorcycle with a samurai sword. No, you wouldn't, it, would you? It's, it's, I think it's meant to have great fun, and I think that's why, that's why it works so well like that and didn't creep people out. It was just kind of one of those funny things. But you take a movie like The Ring or even All Hallows' Eve, um, people coming out of the TV set just in that setting is just damn creepy. It's just kind of kind of surprising, like, oh, shit. Um, not jump scare, but just an extra level of creepiness. Because the whole tone of the movie was creepy in The Ring. The whole tone of the movie in All Hallows' Eve was creepy. Um, but it wasn't creepy in the Demons movies. It was more monster movie fun kind of thing. Almost. Interesting. Yeah, because The Ring, I never thought that was scary at all. In fact, I remember when I first saw that and I saw the the bit that everyone was talking about, the demon comes out the telly. And I watched it and I just went, that was done in Demons 2. <laughs> That's because you had nostalgia with Demons 2. Mm. But I just, I don't know. Maybe, it's, maybe it's me being jaded, I don't know. I think it was the way they shot it in the ring too, with the the makeup and the jerky motion, and you know all that kind yeah. of stuff that just kind of added to that whole. Yeah, this is really kind of that's kind of creepy. Damn. But then it is co- something coming through the telly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's okay, but yeah, all right. But demons too. Again, great makeup effects. Um. I did have to wonder, there is a scene, there are several scenes of the demon blood going th- down through the building, burning like acid. Yes, yes. Obviously a nod to Alien, I would imagine. Um, that never really went anywhere, did it? No, it really didn't. And there was a couple of scenes of the main girl, what was her name, Sally, at the party, where she just stands there and groans and a lot of blood starts pouring out the top of her head, as if she was like shedding skin or something, and... Again, nothing ever came of it. We could always nod that off to the... Uh, maybe the editor fell asleep while he was editing the movie or something. Well, it makes me wonder if there was any other... If there was a lot of stuff cut out of it. There had to be. Don't you think? I, don't, I would have thought so, because there seems to be a lot of different threads that lead off in different places. You know, I got to imagine they were banking high on the 83-minute runtime and had to keep it short to, you know, keep it in- interested. Wow. Because, you know, sometimes people make a 120-minute movie when they should have just cut 15 minutes out of it and it would have been better. <laughs> or sometimes more. It, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so what did you think of Demons 2? You haven't really said. I, I enjoyed it. I liked the first one better. Um, mm-hmm. But it really, it, Demons 2, like I said, drugged for me at the beginning, but really picked up when they, you know, started into the melee with the demons. Because it, it was just so slow at the beginning for me. It was just, oi, really get into it here, folks. Yeah. Because I was used to, you know, you expect it from the first one. The Greta Greta cuts herself with the mask and bada bing, they're into it. Yeah, that's it, I suppose. Yeah, I never thought of that, yeah. But here they're trying to set it up and then they're doing artsy stuff. A lot of people watch the movie and try to build all the characters and you know how it goes. Yeah, and they, they try to build up like they did with the first one about the people on the outside, like the punks driving around. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, God. That never went anywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It was a time filler. Yeah. Do something with the acid. Leave the punks in the car out of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course a dog gets turned into a demon in this one. It does. It that does. Quite, that always used to creep me out when I was younger. I can understand that. It was a little bit of a creepy scene. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, the the actual demon itself, the, when the demon comes out the little boy's back... Oh, God. Yeah, yep, that, yep. That, that was dumb in the second one. It looked better in the first one. Agreed. It looked like a goofy gremlin in the second film. Well, you know, there's those time and budget constraints again. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Demons 1, we're saying, is great. Yes, we are we're saying... We're it, it Absolutely recommended. I think if you like Demons 1, watch Demons 2. You'll still enjoy it. Yes. But it's... It's it's slightly lesser. 
Exactly. And it's not lesser by a bunch. It's just a little bit lesser. Yeah, it's tweaked here and there, and it's uh, yeah, but it's still good fun. Yep, absolutely is absolutely good fun. And you know, Bobby Rhodes manhandling cars is always a good thing. And if I ever joined a gym in an underground car park, I want Bobby Rhodes to be the instructor. <laughs> right. <laughs> in fact, I would insist on it. But in that's his not in his yellow vest. It... <laughs> Absolutely, or his white suit. Oh, imagine him taking a gym lesson in his white pimp suit. <laughs> oh, get, get that me was off my, get me off my fat ass and join a gym. <laughs> <laughs> that was just great stuff. But but absolutely, I mean they're they're uh, they're both good movies and d- definitely demons for sure. Um, and make your own judgment on demons too. Excellent. Okay. Well, as we're talking about franchises and obviously these two films are part of a franchise um have you ventured into any other films with a demon's title i don't know you don't know well i I can't think of one at the moment allow me to educate you then educate me away (laughs) yeah in typical italian fashion there are several other films that do bear the uh the demon's title but they're nothing to do with demons one or two they're the only two that are connected thematically and by a director, basically. Uh, there is a film called Demons 3, The Ogre. Do you know of this one? No. No. Okay. It is directed by uh, Lamberta Barber. Really? Again. Um, it's got nothing to do with the first two films. Um, it, well, I think it was just called The Ogre, and then somebody in marketing just slapped the Demons title on it. Um, I do own a copy on DVD. It was released over here by Vipco. It's a shite film. It's absolutely fucking terrible. It's boring. Nothing happened. There's one titty shot in it, and that is the most exciting it gets. (laughs) Oh, God. And that's not me being sexist. That really is as good as it gets. Oh, God, that's just bad. It's basically um, uh, some people move into a house, uh, and there's a big monster living in the cellar who just sits there and growls, really. So I'm just... Well, if you don't go down to the cellar, it's not a problem, is it? Oh, jeez. And the monster that lives there is... if. Do you remember in Return of the Jedi, the uh, Gamorrean guards in Jabba's palace? Yes. Looks like one of them, basically. Sat in your cellar, oh God. on a throne, just going, Bleh! that's it. Shite oh. film. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. But over here, it, it was released as Demons 3, so I'm, I'm sure some people saw it on, based on that. Have you heard of The Church? No. No. The church is also called Demons 3 in certain territories. Okay. It was directed by uh, Michel Suave, or Michael Suave, who is the guy with the uh, metal mask in the first Demons film. Okay, all right. Yeah, Argento did produce that one, yes. It's quite a good film, actually. I saw it in the 80s. I haven't seen it since. It's quite pricey to get on DVD over here now, but I do remember liking it. It is quite good. Um, It came out in 1989, I think. It is sort of considered a sequel, but because there are some sort of thematic connections but it's not really really but any yeah. good yeah it is pretty good it is pretty good i do remember liking it um i will try and get a copy when money allows there is also a film called black demons or that is also known as demons three <laughs> there's three demons threes good my good god no kidding this is from 1991 this was directed by umberta lenzi who's quite a well-known uh, italian director no Argento, no Lamberto Bravo. Um, yeah, it's called Black Demons. It gets quite good ratings here and there, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. All right, the next three films are Demons Four, Demons Five, and Demons Six. Holy crap! Those yeah. had those. They got to be direct to VHS movies. Uh, I'm just going to call it out. The Demons Four is also called The Devil's Daughter or The Sect. Directed by Michelle Suave again. Produced by Dario Argento. Uh, is there anybody in it? Herbert Lom's in it. Uh, and Kelly Curtis. <laughs> Have you seen it? No. Okay. <laughs> From 1991. Um, it looks to be like a bit of a Rosemary's Baby type thing. Uh, there's Demons 5, Mask of the Demon. Um, from 1989. I've got no info on that. There's Demon 6, The Black Cat, or De Profundis. Uh, I've got no info on that. Uh, the next one, which is called sometimes called Demons 95, as in 1995, is also known as Cemetery Man. 
Now, I've heard of Cemetery Man. Yeah, well, that's directed by Michelle Suave as well. Okay. And stars Rupert Everett, amongst other people. That's quite a famous film. I've got that copy of that. Yeah, that is sometimes included in the Demons canon, oh, even geez. though it's nothing to do with it. But that is basically it. That I mean, so there is, a, there is a sort of further watching if you want to, but I would just stick with Demons 1 and 2. And it's interesting, I can get that uh, church movie here in the U.S. for about eight bucks. Can you really? Yep. yep. Um, if it was that price over here, I'd get it myself. Uh, I do remember liking it. I do remember thinking it was quite good. But, yeah. Um, you, you, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. It, chance. It's, uh, it, it's only on DVD, and you, you can get it. I think, in fact, I think the version you get over here is the American disc, so I don't think it's been officially released over here. Or Arrow yeah. Films, get on it. Yes, I'll be up for some of that. And uh, Black Demons could be worth a go as well, because I've heard good things about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a uh, bit of a franchise there. Yeah, that are not connected by anything. <laughs> <laughs> At least with the um, Pumpkinhead franchise, where the later ones went direct to DVD, uh, they were they were connected. <laughs> you know, they were, co- they were connected because they were all shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, Ed Harley rode the rode the. Uh, you mean Ed Harley? <laughs> yes, he rode the wave. Uh, I do love that first Pumpkinhead film. That's great. Uh, great movie. I don't mind Pumpkinhead too. I know it's terrible, but I quite like it. Yeah, it's it is terrible, but there's something good in the bad. I think. With Pumpkinhead 2, the knowledge that you know Andrew Robinson's just cashing a paycheck helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, are we done with demons? We're done with demons. Well, good. We enjoy those first two films. You take your chances with the rest, I think it's fair to say. Exactly. Exactly. So, what are you looking forward to? What am I looking forward to? What, film-wise? Yeah, what film-wise? Oh, um... I'm looking forward to the new Rob Zombie film. Really? Yes, I am a fan. I I am a fan too. I I have obvious criticisms for his movies, but I overall I'm a fan. Yes, I'm a, well. I've, I've been a fan of his music since the early '90s, but film-wise, uh, apart from that animated one he did, that Haunted World of El Super Bisto, which I didn't care for. Uh, yeah, I'm on board. Yep, yep. That's interesting. When is the release date for that? I don't know. Um, I think it's still in production, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah, I just know that it's coming out this year and that you can buy a T-shirt on eBay, so it can't be that far away. <laughs> I, imagine he's, I imagine he's aiming for a uh, Halloween release date, I'd have thought. That would make sense. You know, maybe we'll talk about Rob Zombie films one day, too. Uh, I think we will. I think uh, I've made a note of that already. I... Uh, I have I have uh, told my son he's going to the movies with me and we're going to go watch It Follows. I've heard good things about that. All right, okay. Uh, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I do know. I've heard. I've uh, I've read a lot of good reviews, but I've also read a couple from people whose opinion I tend to respect that aren't so good. I'll let you know. So yeah, let me know. Let me know. I will get to it when it comes out on DVD over here. I think it's coming out pretty soon, actually. I think it's, uh, this is a late theatrical release, and I think DVD is, like, slated to come out. God, I thought it was pretty quick, because it's, uh, it's one of those, I hear, it's one of those independent horrors that is getting a lot of play in theaters and, you know, time to support indie horror kind of stuff. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, again, I haven't seen it, so I really don't know much about it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, you know... I'm really looking to, uh, looking forward to that. Um, looking forward to uh, I got to order my copy of uh, what? How do you pronounce it? Bad book. The Babadook. Babadook. Yes, I've heard really good things about that, so I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for that one. Uh, I haven't seen it. Um, again, I've heard some very very bad reviews from people whose opinion I tend to trust. Really? Yes. But I also know there's been some good reviews, but I'm waiting for the DVD release over here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, it comes out oh this week. All right, okay. Yeah, I should yeah I should watch it on DVD and I shall let you know when I've seen it. But um, yeah, honestly, I've 
I've sort of it's one of, I tend to avoid films that get loads and loads of hype, and so I can sit down and make my own mind up sort of thing. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Yeah, I don't tend to sort of. Uh, I'm not into one of these. Oh, it's the latest thing. You've got to see it. You've got to see it because you know I've been let down like that before. So, as you constantly do in horror films. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of which, I do have a film that I am. I've been sent for review, so I, I won't say too much. But it's the first film f- recorded on a mobile phone. Really. And it's called Hooked Up. Interesting. 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 Yes, it arrived yesterday, so I haven't watched it yet. So. Uh, I should let you know when I've seen that, what I think. Okay, okay. There's a movie out that has piqued my interest, but I'm still on the fence about it. Uh, un- what is it called, Unfriended? Unfriended. No, but I'm guessing that's going to have a Facebooky type premise. Um, It's all done on video chat kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, that's what it's called. But I heard good things about it. Um, it, It's something that they they did in a movie that I just absolutely hated uh, called The Den. A lot of people like it. I just – the ending ruined it for me horribly. It was a good premise, but it was more that – it was a horror movie through online chat kind of thing, and it was a just crazy stalker weird thing, and then they made up the ending. I don't know where they got that from. (laughs) Well, I know – I know where they got it from, so. Okay, and of course, the other thing that I'm hoping will come out this year is the latest Phantasm film. I haven't heard much, but yeah, me too. It's going to be called Phantasm Ravager. Or Phantasm 5, correct? Or Phantasm 5. But uh, yeah, um, as far as I know, it's got a 2015 release date. But that's it. That's it, huh? Nothing else. That's it. That's all, all I can find on it. Interesting, I, and I, you know, uh, on a non-movie note, I'm, I'm again lo- looking forward to the uh, Scarlet Gospels. I'm a huge, oh, yes. huge Clive Barker fan, huge Pinhead, Hellraiser fan, um, and really, really looking forward to that book. Just horribly intrigued and interested by what's going to happen. Yes, yes, it's not long to go now. Only a few weeks. Yep, exactly. Only a few weeks, and. Uh, um, I'll be uh, downloading that audiobook ASAP. Oh, I've got the hardback ordered. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'll order the hardback at some point, but uh, definitely going get to uh, get the audiobook. Oh, well, on a Hellraiser tip, have you uh, – or are you going to pre-order the, the Leviathan documentary? I, I've thought about it. I haven't looked into it yet. Um, okay. I'm excited about that one as well. Um it's uh yeah I, I i will get it at some point i don't know when but i will get it i think pre-orders start tomorrow i believe oh is that what it is excellent yes and then they'll send it out as and when so but yeah i'm uh you know i'm a massive claude barker fan really yeah especially if, especially of his more horror stuff but you know um really really like the stuff absolutely yeah you can't go wrong with a bit of uh a bit of action down in hell, to be honest. If that's where it's set, of course. <laughs> you know, and I've read the comics. I, yeah, exactly. I've never, ever delved into the Hellraiser comics. I'd love to, but it's, it's knowing which ones to go, because there's, there's quite a few collections, isn't there? There are. Um, start with the Hellraiser ones. No, Any, yeah. anything, anything that doesn't have, uh, like, you know, Hellraiser Bestiary, obviously, is a later one. Start with the Hellraiser ones. It's, uh, they're really interesting. Mm, this, Clive Barker did some, didn't he? I think he did most of them. Oh, did he do at most le- of them? Yeah, I know. At, at least in the original Hellraiser stuff. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Yes, I do. there are some compendiums you can get, don't there, of different volumes, which uh, always look interesting. Yes, yes, I think I've got most of them, or close to it. Oh, right, yeah. Well, when finances allow, I may delve into some of those. I think you can get some of them fairly cheap over here, to be honest. But yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to the documentary. Though. Yeah, I can get reasonably cheap here as well. It will be extremely interesting. It will. It's a three-disc set. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it's region-free as well. Really? Yes, I've just sent you the link via Skype. Oh, very cool. I see it. All right. 
I went and bought the Hellraiser DVD or Blu-ray just to have the commentary with uh, Clive Barker. So there's that. I do not have them on Blu-ray. I'd like to get Hellraiser one and two on Blu-ray. I've got them on DVD and I've played them with Clive Barker's commentaries. Ah, very cool. Yeah, you get all those with them. But I have heard that uh, the Hellraiser Blu-ray is supposed to look fantastic. It looks really good. Does it? It, uh, it it's worth it. Yeah, I will I th- delve into them. I think I paid about six dollars for it. Blimey! Yeah, oh, it's more more expensive than that over here. CX shops, buddy. CX shops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's the sort of thing you don't tend to get in the second-hand shops over here. Though. Oh God! You can get. I. Do you know what I found in a second-hand shop? Paid three bucks for. Go on then. Basket case. What on Blu-ray? Yeah. No. Have no. You? No. No. DVD. Oh. Well, still, still worth it, isn't it? Yeah, three bucks for bass. Are you kidding me? Fuck yeah, I'd have some of that. Exactly. That's the little monster set at the end of the second movie. <laughs> yeah. There's a franchise we'll have to get into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bleed with squeaky springs. Oh, gosh. <laughs> right. Okay. I think we ought to wrap this up then. Um,. I don't think we should mention what we're going to do next time because we haven't decided. And we okay. might change our, we might change our minds. So that sounds good. We'll talk offline about that. But uh, yeah, apart from that, I've enjoyed talking demons and uh, we must do this again. Hopefully we, we will. <laughs> All right. Cheers, right. everybody. Let's say goodbye then. Bye. 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 Right, Susan, right. Keep pumping, baby, keep pumping. You'll never get no strangers.